happy morning to everyone welcome to my channel biotech info today i'm going to take the class of 11th ncrt unit 1 diversity in the living world who are watching my video for the first time subscribe my channel click the bell icon if you click the bell icon you will get the notifications of our upcoming videos so let us get into the unit 1 that is diversity of the living world it consisting of four chapters children the first one is in living world second is biological classification third one is in plant kingdom and fourth one is in animal kingdom so here a new word that is diversity we have to know what is the synonyms of this diversity can anyone guess what is the diversity means if as then leave a comment in the comment box different variety variations are the synonyms for the word diversity right now here where you are observing this different where you are observing this varieties where you are observing this variations in the living world what are those those are going to be called it as plants and the animal species what are those plant and animal species which are present in this living world are unique different from each other that's why the topic is diversity in the living world so when you are coming to the higher standard you have to modify the definition by saying it as biology is a study of life forms living processes and also evolution of an organism what is life forms means the organisms which is having a life we can say that it is called as a life forms then what is meant by living processes there are so many processes which are going on in our body what are those like for example digestion respiration reproduction excretion etc are going to be called it as in living processes which are occurring in our body so how we can define this processes means we can define this processes as they are certain mechanical or they are certain chemical reactions that are going to occur in a series for a change for a preservation then you are going to call that one as processes digestion is a process occurring in an organism where you can see a breakdown of a complex substances into the simple substance now the next one is evolution we are observing evolution that is from unicellular organisms like single celled organism we can see to a multicellular organisms we are seeing that there is a development in the organisms that is called as an evolution right the people used to worship the inanimate and animate organisms like inanimate means what like a water wind fire and animate matters like plants and animals they used to pray as a god so we can see the living world is comprising of an amazing diversity of the organism now here what is meant by amazing amazing means you will feel surprised you will feel wonder you will get astonished you will uh, feel that wow it's an excellent now even sometimes when you go to the hill station you can observe there the different species of the plant belonging to the fabaceae liliaceae solanaceae etc even if you are going to observe the galloping of the horse A valley of a plants. And also migrating birds from one place to another. These all are the different species which are present in this nature. And when we see them, we feel as if, wow. After the studies, the scientists have got a five factors to differentiate the inanimate matter and an animate object and those factors are 
growth, reproduction, metabolism, cellular organization and consciousness. But also we have go come to know that the growth and reproductions are going to get into a category of non-defining factors. Why we are calling it as a non-defining factors? Because there are certain exemptions. What is that one? There are certain exemptions in this particular factors of growth and the reproduction. So we are calling this one as a non-defining factors. Then you may get the doubt. Why? What is there? Okay children. Now in this particular chapter, we are going to know what is meant by leaving how can you differentiate an inanimate matter to an animate object? So there are certain factors. What are those factors? How many factors are there? Five factors are there. What are those? The first one is growth. Second is reproduction, metabolism, cellular organization and consciousness. Basing on these particular factors, we can differentiate. How? Means for example, what is a growth? Growth means an increasing in the mass is going to be considered as a growth. Yes or not? Now here see a non-living object is also going to exhibit the growth. How? Mountains, molders and sand molds. Even they exhibit the growth by the accumulation of a matter. Then you can see even mountains are growing. So those are also going to be considered as a living objects. So here what is the thing is the growth is not considered as a defining factors to differentiate the organisms because there are certain assumptions here. Even you can see the plants is having an unlimited growth and the animals is having a limited growth. Even the mountains, mulder and sand molds are accumulating the matter and they are exhibiting the growth. So this is not going to be considered. That's why it is coming under a category called as a non-defining factor. The second one is reproduction. What is a reproduction? It is like a production of a progeny which is possessing a character. Few are more characters which are similar to their parents is going to be called it as reproduction. But what about the asexual reproduction which is going to produce a so many like a hundreds of spores. There is no any requirement of the gametes that is also going to exhibit the reproduction. And also you can see yeast and hydra where the budding is going to take place. There is no involvement of any sort of the gametes. And also even planaria. Planaria it is going to exhibit the regeneration. Like for example if any part of that particular thing is going to be lost. It is going to gain it again by the process called as regeneration. Even you can see the filamentous algae and also the protonema of the masses exhibiting the fragmentation. Fragmentation means what? Getting into or splitting into the smaller sections and it is going to grow as a new individual. So there is no requirement of the gametes over here. So the reproduction is also not considering as a character that's why it is coming under the non-defining factors by these two factors we can't differentiate that those are living or the non-living one the next one comes is metabolism what is a metab met uh, by metabolism living organisms are made up of so many chemicals like it is consisting we are having so many cells and the cells are made up of certain elements and those elements are going to join and form the biomolecules it's going to happen in each and every organism it may be the either unicellular or a bicellular multicellular uh, animals it's going to happen so this is considered as a defining factor 
to decide that it is a living or a non-living object. One more is there that is called cellular organization. Cellular organization means what? First, the cell, it's a basic unit of life. It is going to combine and form the tissues. It's going to combine and form the organ. It's going to combine and form the organ system. And then the organism is forming. Here, this type of process is taking place in all the multicellular organisms. So, this factor is going to be considered as a defining factor now the next one is what consciousness even we can see that we the plants and animals are going to exhibit uh, the reactions towards certain factors like a light water and temperature like sunflower is there it is going to show the stimuli response towards the sunlight 